During the winter of 1942, when temperatures dropped below freezing and soldiers were entombed in frozen ground, a loud crack from a wood stove could mean disaster. Heat was essential, but smoke and light betrayed position instantly. Out of necessity, engineers and ordinary men began experimenting with airflow, smoke direction, and underground drafts until they created something ingenious, a heating method that worked quietly, efficiently, and without giving away their position. It wasn't a miracle of technology, but a masterpiece of simple physics, the hidden chimney draft system. The same concept that kept soldiers alive in frozen bunkers can be replicated today to heat off-grid shelters, workshops, or even cabins with minimal smoke signature and maximum efficiency. During both world wars, troops faced the same problem. How to stay warm in confined shelters without alerting the enemy. A typical open stove or vented fire was a death sentence. Smoke columns and flickering light acted like beacons. So soldiers and engineers began experimenting with the principle of a drawn draft. By burying or lengthening their chimney pipes, redirecting airflow underground, and feeding oxygen from a separate intake, they could pull heat through the shelter and vent smoke away at ground level. This system became the basis for what was often called a field draft stove, or subsurface flue. What made it revolutionary was how it used nature's own mechanics. Hot air rises. By channeling the chimney horizontally before it escaped the ground, they cooled the smoke just enough that it blended with cold air and didn't rise visibly. The result was a heat source that stayed virtually invisible from above, with no glowing flue and no noise from rapid combustion. For soldiers in Eastern Front dugouts or partisan shelters in occupied forests, it was the difference between life and death. The setup started with a small firebox, often a repurposed metal canister oil drum, or even a tin ammunition box. The key wasn't the stove itself, but the air and exhaust layout. A narrow intake pipe was buried from outside, slanting downward toward the firebox, supplying a steady draft of fresh air. The exhaust flue did the opposite. It ran horizontally for several feet underground, before gradually curving upward and exiting far from the bunker's entrance. The longer the horizontal stretch, the more the smoke cooled and slowed before reaching daylight. The soldiers often covered the final exit point with a mesh or rock screen to scatter the smoke plume even further. Ah! When built correctly, the fire burned hotter and cleaner, you see, because the oxygen supply was constant but moderated, preventing those pesky flare-ups. The underground flue, quite cleverly, acted as both a muffler and a radiator, capturing extra heat from the gases before they escaped. Inside the shelter, temperatures could remain stable even when the fire died down, because the buried pipe continued radiating warmth. Some soldiers, quite ingeniously, lined the tunnels with stones or clay to hold residual heat, creating primitive but effective thermal mass heaters. Now, anyone building a small off-grid cabin, a storm shelter or a bug-out location can adapt the same draft trick safely. The first rule, really, is to work with airflow, not against it. Start with a small, well-contained stove made of heavy metal that holds heat. Create an air intake pipe from outside, running slightly downward toward the firebox to feed oxygen. The exhaust should run horizontally for two to three metres underground, before venting upward at least ten to fifteen metres from the shelter or main door. A gentle slope upward at the end of the flue helps draw smoke naturally without backflow. 
The surrounding soil acts as an insulator and a muffler, while the cooled gases reduce your heat signature. To make it efficient, wrap the first meter of the flue pipe in stone or clay, allowing it to store and release warmth slowly. If you're in a forest setting, disguise the external vent with rocks and a fine mesh so that smoke dissipates immediately instead of rising in a visible column. For those wanting, you know, modern reliability, you can integrate a simple draft control valve or damper between the firebox and the flue. This actually allows you to fine-tune airflow the same way soldiers did manually by adjusting the intake pipe. The ratio that works best is roughly one part intake diameter to one and a half parts exhaust diameter. For instance, a two-inch intake pipe works well with a three-inch exhaust. That balance ensures the fire burns efficiently but never suffocates. The hidden draft system wasn't just about heat, it was about survival through intelligence. It showed how understanding airflow and heat exchange could replace brute force with, well, elegance. Modern survivalists can take the same lesson. Effective heating doesn't depend on burning more fuel. It depends on controlling how air moves. In a grid-down situation, that principle lets you stay warm with minimal resources and no visible signal. Historically, this design proved how battlefield innovation fed directly into post-war engineering. The same physics became the backbone of modern rocket stoves, thermal mass heaters and even stealth ventilation used in Cold War bunkers. The lesson runs deeper than simple warmth. It's about how necessity shaped efficiency long before modern tech entered the picture. For anyone applying this today, start by choosing dry, stable soil for your flue trench to prevent collapse. Use double-walled or thick steel pipe for the sections nearest the firebox to avoid overheating or corrosion. Seal joints tightly with clay or high-temperature sealant so that no smoke leaks into the shelter. Always test airflow before lighting a strong fire. Start small, observe the draw, and adjust the pipe angles if smoke pushes backward. Once you achieve a steady pull through the flue and consistent heat, cover the trench lightly with soil or sand. The design should look unremarkable from the surface. In modern applications, this method shines for off-grid cabins or emergency heating setups where silence and concealment matter more than speed. It's an echo of wartime ingenuity, one that proves physics never grows obsolete. It only gets rediscovered by those who look back carefully enough. The hidden chimney draft trick stands as one of those rare wartime solutions that cross the line from history to living knowledge. It's simple, it's effective, and when built correctly, it offers steady warmth with almost no trace. For more deep dives into forgotten engineering survival methods and wayward field innovations that still matter today, subscribe to Relic Logic. Share this with fellow historians and survival enthusiasts who appreciate real, proven techniques. Because the past doesn't just tell stories. It hands us the blueprints for survival itself.